Jesus is, is trying to give us that great example. To be like him. To be one with him as he is with the Father. And so when he teaches us how to pray, how to come before him, it is to glory his name. To put him out in front. To let him be the guide, him the director, him the awesomeness in our lives. To get over ourselves and to surrender. To be part of that glorious wonder that he is in life at all times. And so, as we've been going through this uh, Lord's Prayer, we're now in, in week four. We're, we're into the part to where it kind of changes just a little bit. The beginning was our Father. This adoration, this knowing that He is truly God of all and majestic. We, we don't even have a, a word that says and can truly translate what God is saying when he says, hallowed be thy name. That is so deep, so mystical, that it's hard. But if we get that feeling in our hearts, then that's when the transformation starts in us. To give him the glory, the wonder, the understanding of everything. And so we, we adore him, we, we reach for him, we want that relationship with him. And then we went into your will be done. Your kingdom come. Bring it to us as we know that that is in heaven. And yet, if we continue to walk in this earth, we can't fathom what that kingdom is really like. So that's where prayer and the word and, and the enthusiasm and the wonder of God comes into light. Because he is truly the light in our lives. So we, we effectively say, as we're praying, we want this communication with God. And, and we, we get so focused on us a lot of times that we forget that when we come before the Father, it is truly in that adoration and that understanding that the relationship is what he's looking for in us. Because in the beginning, that's what ended, was that relationship. And so many times, we so flippantly go into our prayers and just to, to be so self-centered that we forget that God gives all things. He is the wonder and the light. So we, we, we pray, and then we, 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 we need to get the practice down because it's more about what we think, our posturing, our, our, our wanting God, maybe even demanding at times that he change something. He's looking for that humble surrender, that response to him. And we've been through adoration. We've been through surrender. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And, and, and these things that are happening. And then we, we get to this as we go through it. And I will read from the King James Version. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our tre trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, as we come before the Father, Jesus gave us this prayer as an example in our lives of how to truly adore our Father. We don't need to inform Him. 
We don't need to influence him, but we need to come together with that true response to him that we truly want that relationship with our Father in heaven. To surrender, to give him our all, that we might be filled to the full with Jesus as God has given him to us. Uh, there's many, many different uh, verses, and I'll just give you a few that, and, and, and you can look this up, whether it's a concordance or Google it out of the fullness of God. And just some of those, Ephesians uh, 3.19, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. The fullness of God. The wonder, that, that sense of being together with God through Jesus Christ, our precious Savior. What a feeling. What an understanding that is to transform our lives into something that is God-given, God-willed, God-desires. God desires us far above what we desire Him. He's the reason. He's the understanding. He's the knowledge. He's all things. So be filled up. For in Him all fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. That was Colossians 2.9. Colossians 1.19. For a man, for it was the Father's good pleasure for all fullness to dwell in him. So this is, this is the understanding that God wants us to know his fullness. To know his understanding and his being in all things. I, I got this uh, passage out of... Uh, Oswald Chambers' book, and the title was Transformed by Beholding. We all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of God, are being transformed into the same image. That's 2 Corinthians 3.18. And it says, the greatest characteristic a Christian can exhibit is this completely unveiled openness before God, which allows that person's life to become a mirror for others. When the Spirit fills us, we are transformed, and by beholding God, we become mirrors. You can always tell when someone has been beholding the glory of the Lord because your inner spirit senses that he mirrors the Lord's own character. Beware of anything that would spot or tarnish that mirror in you. It is almost always something good that will stain it. Something good, but not what is best. So, here again, are we searching for the fullness of God, everything that he can give us and understand, or are we settling? We come to this, this part in the prayer, the Lord's example to us, where we've transformed from just adoring God and surrendering to a request, an ask God. And then we go, well, why would we have to ask when God knows everything? Because he wants us to desire that relationship, to talk with him, dwell in him, and understand that he wants us to communicate these things because we truly know that he gives everything. He is the provider, the giver of all things. All things material, all things spiritual. And as these things in our lives come to light, all of this is to glorify God in his richness and glory. So we, we, we give, come to this part where it says, give us this day our daily bread. What is bread? What is the understanding of bread? And we read in, in Matthew 6, starting at 25. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. 
isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live, live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today, trouble is enough for today. So, why do we ask? Why do we request of God? And, and, and how do we do this? Here we, go, we go back to earlier when it says the practice. How do we practice this? Asking is an important part of prayer, but not the only part. We, we, we need to know that God is seeking more from us than just, hey, hey give me. Give me. Uh, we go back to, to uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and it says, By people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Seek that relationship rather than just the handout. Seek what God has for you in your everyday life to worship and glorify him. So, we have this knowledge of God, praise him, thank him, surrender, fully submit before we ask. Before we ask. And then we get into the request. And this acknowledges that God is our provider. And as we're asking, are, are we demanding at times? Or are we truly seeking the will of God? Are we truly seeking those things that God wants for us? Are we truly getting into the habit of when we pray is to adore Him, to seek His glory in our lives, and then say, Lord, I know You know what I need, but I need You. For You are truly the provider of all things. Not just the provider of the material things, but the provider of what Jesus said. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. And many times when we're seeking something, it, it may not even be a need, it may be a want. Something in our lives that we are seeking that, that God says, but I know all of this, but you're just wanting something. You're not truly needing it. And that brings us to a point of, are we truly seeking God's will in our lives? Uh, we have to have faith, trust, and desire. So many times we get so focused on our physical or material wants and needs, that we forget that what's it like if we come before Christ and say, Lord, just give me faith. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. Give me desire to seek you, to, to come before you in that humbleness of heart, mind, and body that you are truly the light 
that's shining for you. Is the glory of God shining through our lives every day? Or do we let these material things kind of get in the way and block our vision? But you know, sometimes we get so focused on the day that we forget that, you know, we don't look far down the road. But is God providing for us for tomorrow? If we are truly in need, are we thanking Him for that? Are we praising His holy name? You know, I'm hoping that each one of us would desire that if we had nothing and we were asking God for one thing, it would be that spiritual food. That true knowledge that Christ is out there. He's providing all of this. Boost my spirit. Feed my spirit. Know that I need that spiritual being from God to dwell in me. To know that He is my all. That when the worst thing that could happen in our lives and we had nothing, we would have everything. Everything. Because Christ is our Lord and Savior is everything. And when, when we get that feeling and that understanding, our material wants and needs are almost invisible to us because the Spirit is so strong in us and so desirable to us that that's where we go. You know, Jesus when he was being tempted, and, and, and he said, the devil says, well, you know, just make this rock of food. But Jesus said, no. The scripture says, people do not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. And, and we can go back to, to Deuteronomy to find that passage, it, it's amazing. We, we go out here and we're tempted a little bit and we try to battle Satan or we try to battle our own desires with what we think. And yet here's Jesus, our Lord and Savior. What does he do? He refers to Scripture. He goes back to the Scripture. He uses God's word to fight those battles. Deuteronomy 8.3 Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna. A food previously unknown to you and your ancestors, he did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Is that truly our lives? Is that what we're seeking? Is that what we want? Or are we still on the fence? Just give me this. And so many times... We even say, give me this, and I will then do what? I will pray more. I will tithe if you just give me a better job. I will do this. And yet, if we're not in that habit already, it most likely won't be there. So is our desire that true richness of God? Is it something that we truly do? Do we get our nourishment? Jesus with the woman at the well, John 4, 34 and 35. Then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. 
it, it, it's, it's interesting that so many times we're so focused on, on, on the word or prayer or work life that we forgot that, you know, God wants us to finish, and he wants us to finish well, as Paul said. He wants us to desire to, desire to continue to do his will and to do it in his thought process, not our own. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest, but I say, wake up and look around. The fields are ripe for harvest. Is that what we're looking for? Is that what we're praying for? When we're praying, Lord, give me this day our daily bread. Are we seeking that richness in our lives to continue to glorify God and to reach out to others, to be the light for the world. You know, we are coming into a time right now where many people are questioning with this COVID and with the world problems going on around us. It's so easy for us to get into the habit of going, Lord, fix this. We're demanding, you know, fix this out. But it's interesting as we get deeper in the world, the word of God, he says, hey, listen, make me strong to stand today for Christ. To be ready with a word. To be ready with an explanation of why in these times of trouble, we can be without fear. We can be without fear because Jesus Christ is that person right here. And he's right here. And he's everywhere. But so many times, we let fear and doubt come into our lives in a way that says, hey, wait a minute. I don't know if I can handle this. What will happen to me? All of these things come about. But if we're truly praying to God in His light and His endurance, we're going, hey, we're doing this with confidence. We're doing it with commitment. We're doing it with the life and the desire to please, to worship, to then work, take action to know that God is our guide. You know, we seek God. We seek Christ first. And then we use His Word as our power and our strength to get into God, to get that relationship strong and true as we pray, give us today. All we can seek. All we can desire to know of God. Let me take his word in. Let me take his, his fullness into me. And then put it out to others. To let it out there. Let that world see what's going on in our lives. I am the bread of life. Is that what we're seeking in all of our prayers? All the time. Are we desiring that rich, nourishing bread of life that comes through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to give us and to fill us with that desire? John 6, 35 and 37. And, and this is just after the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me. However, those the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. So, 
Are we desiring that closeness with God? Are we knowing and understanding that He is truly that bread, that joy, that peace, that lack of wanting and desiring anything but the glory of God in our lives? That knowledge and understanding, that wisdom to desire to do His will and to pray and to be close to Him and know that He is truly the provider of all things. Christ is the source of that spiritual food. He's the only way to have that truly full life. As true believers, knowing and understanding that through Christ, God reaches out to us, His children is adopted through Christ to desire to pray to him, Lord, I know you are my provider. This is where I'm at today. This is what I need today. My thoughts, my desires are in him. But Lord, if this doesn't happen, if I don't have food, if I don't have the clothes to wear or the car to drive, let me be at peace knowing that I have you. I have you. And I desire you. And I desire that relationship. I desire that knowledge, that understanding of the glory. I was looking out the door the other night and as the moon just kind of hung right there in the sky. If we don't know the glory of God, I think it's in Job where he says, I hang the moon and the stars. I put them in place and I keep them there. I keep them there. So to think that this God that can do those kind of things, that life-enriching power that comes through prayer. Are we practicing that every single day? Is the first thing that we think about Jesus Christ and His glory? Do we get up and adore God right off the bat? Or does life take us down a path and then we catch up with God when we get a moment? Or do we make that moment right now? Do we seek and desire that thing very first thing in the morning, that He is truly first in our minds? To adore Him. To surrender, God, am I surrendering you today every single minute? Or is something in my life, some situation, going to come between me and you? And Lord, give me today all of that fullness that you have for me. As your will is done in my life, is it truly your will? Have I surrendered? Am I wanting that nourishment? Am I wanting the fullness or is fear standing in my way? Is the fear of having to do something, maybe it's reaching out to that neighbor. And it's interesting, we're, we're, we're ready to, to step ahead and step out there and talk to this person who has a genuine desire to listen. But it's a little harder for us to reach out to that person who may not be quite so open, who may be even radical. But Jesus says, love everybody as I have loved you. And if Jesus Christ can love me, I can truly reach out with that desire to love that next person. That next person. No matter what the situation. Because God 
put that out there. I didn't. But am I ready to turn and take that action as I say, God, feed me? Am I willing to then step out and do his will as he feeds me? Or am I holding back? As as we just seek and desire God's will in our lives, there's a humbleness and a peace that comes through us that, you know, do we ask for rest in Christ? That Sabbath, that desire to be at peace, no matter what the COVID does or the government does, are we at peace with God? Are we, do we ask Him for that desire to stand strong in the Word and know the Word? Follow the Word. Eat it up to the fullness. Are we desiring to know God in His richness and His glory so much that we would give anything, anytime for Him? What gets in our way could be the world, the news. You get up in the morning and you watch the news and you go, oh, I just don't know how we can get over this. And yet, it's it's interesting that God takes care of this every day. And we don't have to then step up and be the world's Savior because we already have a Savior. But are we following Him? Are we desiring to be that person He can use by asking Him to fill us up to the fullness, to the desire of being the light in someone else's life? To come in here this morning And look to your neighbor and say, I'm here for you. I will encourage you. I will lift you up no matter what. I will look to you to do the same for me. Do I pray for that unity in church every morning that this church right here would be so unified, so together, that people outside of that door would say, hey, I want to see what that's about. Or are they just seeing a frazzled little chaotic group of people who checked church off today in their lives? When you get up on a Sunday morning and you're seeking God in your life, are you truly praying to Him to feed you today? Are we seeking as we come in that door, to reach out to him and say, Lord, feed me, fill me up. Fill me up that I might be that worker that desires to finish well. this week. We, we, we have a challenge going on this month to, to each one of us, our hearts. Where are our hearts at? Are we moving forward Are we still in that little stagnant pond somewhere? Are we truly moving forward? Are we truly seeking what God desires in our lives today? Are we moving forward? Uh, Are are we stepping up? Are we serving? Are we doing these things that God so desires us to do? To to possibly, if you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, are, are, you, are you seeking, are you desiring that salvation? And then if you've done that, are you desiring to be baptized, to, to, to commit to God, to be washed in the blood? Uh, you know, are you getting involved to serve in your local body today? Whether it be here or somewhere else, it don't matter. Are you serving God in your everyday life? Are you reaching out to those in need? Whatever that may be. Maybe it's a need in the community. Or maybe someone just needs a shoulder. Are we too busy? Are we sacrificing something for God today? Are we seeking to be fed to that desire that he wants us to do, 
to reach out? Are we seeking to, to know, to get connected with God? Maybe that's working in your local body to, to reach out to someone who may be struggling and to, to desire to, to help them along. Or are you willing to then reach out to someone and say, you know, I, I really need some help here. That's, that's awful interesting. We are so afraid in a church body just to reach out and say, hey, you know, I'm struggling here. And yet, it's interesting when that happens, the release is tremendous. When we can feel comfortable enough through prayer, through the unity in Christ, to be able to just reach out to another believer and saying, hey, I'm struggling. Help me through this. Pray with me. Be a shoulder. Be understanding. Be in the Word. Help me understand what this Word says to me. So, as, as we grow in faith, we grow in understanding, we grow in the desire to be God's servant, can we truly say, Lord, feed me? Lord, feed me. Or are we scared to say that because we don't want to reach out? He may ask me to do, go to this person that may be undesirable. He may ask me to go serve on a weekend, and I want to do something else on the weekend. Or are we truly opening when he does feed us to go, yes, Lord, I am yours. I will do what you want me to do. Because this physical body is frail and it's a whisper. And yet when we're fed with the bread of life, Jesus Christ, it all of a sudden is eternal. It is forever in the presence of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. This request isn't just about filling your stomach, but more importantly, about filling your soul. Are we desiring to fill our souls up this morning? There isn't any food on this earth, and I have tested many, I know, I, I know that's hard to believe with, with this lithe body that I have that, that I only eat apples and lettuce. I've tasted a lot of things from some great chefs. And yet until I truly got the taste of that bread of Jesus Christ that satisfies so fully, nothing touches that. Nothing. Not one thing on this earth touches that glorious richness of the fullness of God. And yet we have it to look forward today, tomorrow, and every day. We are never full. So many times, people of my age, and I know it's hard to believe that here again, this body is aging, and yet retirement, when it comes, is only just a step that we are able then to do more, to reach out fully, to grasp that richness of God, to understand that, no, Jesus said, work until your last breath. Praise until your last breath. Learn until your last breath. Seek me until your last breath. Let me feed you until your last breath and you will truly know me. What a wonderful thought that is. When we become before the God and he says, well done. Well done. Not to glorify us in any way, but to glorify God in heaven. Uh, 
no one can serve two masters, for you will hate the one and love the other. You will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved. And my notes say money. but we can be enslaved to many, many, many things. Are we desiring to be enslaved to Jesus Christ? To be so much a part of Jesus Christ that we see nothing else. Is his word on our lips? Is his word in our thoughts? Is his word and his food in our prayers? Do we seek him and desire him in all things? Do we only pray when all of a sudden the roof fell in? Or are we so prayed up in Christ, that we have the peace to know that if I don't have a sandwich tomorrow, everything is going to be just fine. Just fine. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He's done. Is praise the first thing? Or is it at the end and say, oh, by the way, thank you. Or do we start off with that and do we hold strong to it? Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Are we truly living in Christ Jesus today and every day? Or is it just when we have time? Make time for God. Trust Him in all your prayers and desires. Trust Him to know that He has the good plan and I do. I do not, for he is truly God, provider, giver of all things. Precious God, thank you. Amen. I'll tell you what, if if this song at this time of this service today doesn't put a tear in your eye to know that Jesus Christ is truly everything in our lives. Oh, precious God, Heavenly Father. Lord, we so desire to, to seek your fullness and, and just your will. That we might be ready and willing servants for you. To truly desire that bread that filled us up. Oh, precious Jesus. Lord, don't be a part of my life, Jesus. I don't want you as part of my life, Father. I want you to be everything, every last desire to be you in your fullness. Oh, praise God, our loving Jesus and Savior. Amen.